he's going to need to throw for some more yards, and he's not doing that either. And so I just think, yeah, he's never going to give you like a below 15, 18 point game because of the rushing, but he's also never going to hit that ceiling of, of Dak or, or Kyler Murray numbers. Right here. If you like that fresh fantasy football content and you like it daily and you want more of it, consider subscribing on the YouTube channel and give this and our other likes, our other videos a like on your way in. All right, we've got to talk about the Sunday night football matchup, guys. We've got the Baltimore Ravens hosting the Kansas City Chiefs, Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes in a 55-point over-under. And surprisingly, Kansas City only favored by three and a half. I thought after Baltimore's performance on Monday night, this might be a bigger line, especially after Kansas City's performance. But I think they're banking on the fact that when these two meet up, it's usually a lot closer. Um, we'll start with the Kansas City side of the ball. Austin, we'll start with our confidence level moving forward in CEH and especially in this tough matchup. I think you're muted, Austin. <laughs> Much appreciated on this. So what do I like about CEH? Dominated snap share was 72% versus Williams is 22. Had 14 carries. Nobody else had more than one. He had three targets, caught them all. Great. What don't I like? Horrible pass blocking score. Uh, week one, um, deep red. And not very efficient numbers either. 14 carries for just 43 yards, right around over three yards per carry. Andy Reid and Kansas City are not going to stand for this poor efficiency for very long. They will continue to experiment with packages and rolls until they are playing their best football. This is not their best football from the running game. I don't believe this is, uh, which which is where CEH's role and production remains unclear for me. Um, he's going to be the leader. He's going to be involved in this offense. is going to be very good. But how much of a committee this is going to turn into, I'm not totally sure. And here's the point that we're not evaluating yet is that this team has brought in veterans in the past. They did it just last year with Le'Veon Bell. They could go ahead and do it again. Right now we're saying, oh, he's the best of what's there. What's there could change overnight. So if CEH doesn't pick it up, it will change. It's just that type of team and coach where they're not going to stand for this type of poor efficiency. Johnny, I'll just be interested to see Jarek McKinnon's usage in this game. You know, like it, how long before they start mixing in Jarek McKinnon? And I'm not saying Jarek McKinnon's some world beater, but to Austin's point, they should start – maybe they start working in more options here to try and mess with the, you know, efficiency of the offense. But moving on to the pass catchers here, I want to talk a little bit about how we've just been begging for a third option in the passing game. And I just think that Reed is too good at calling plays and Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey are too special for anything else to emerge at this time. You know, you've seen McCole Hardman last week, three of three for 19 yards. And then the rest, Demarcus Robinson, Byron Pringle can combine for two catches and 15 yards. No other wide receiver excites me in Kansas City except for keeping McCole Hardman stashed as he could be a dominant player should Tyreek Hill go down. But other than that, I'm not really looking to roll out McCole Hardman in, you know, save for a matchup against maybe Dallas where you really need a what the heck flex and you're trying to get it in there. Um, I just don't think McCole Hardman is producing enough for us to really think of a viable third option in the passing game. And then just quickly on Travis Kelsey, before I toss it to Johnny on Patrick Mahomes, I was admittedly scared because he shaved his beard off. But I mean, now he has a touchdown in six of his last eight games. So no fear of the beard or lack thereof here for me. Johnny Pat Mahomes, that offensive line, he looked to be back to his dominant self. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of interesting. It was one of those Pat, Pat Mahomes performances where, like, he really wasn't doing much in the beginning. You got a little concerned, and then in a snap of a finger, all of a sudden he had put up two tutties, and yeah, all was well, and then he ended up having a, a good fantasy day. I do think that even though Baltimore Ravens' matchup on paper looks to be a little bit difficult, you're still going to throw him in your lineup. Again, you're not going to bench Pat, uh, Pat Mahomes. And I do want to note that last year, we got one of Pat Mahomes' best games against Baltimore. He usually shows up and shows out to show Lamar Jackson what he wish he could do and uh, the quarterback he wish he could be, you know, in the NFL. What I wish everybody could do that's watching right now would hit that like and subscribe button here on the YouTube channel and help us grow the channel. It would help us in a big way. We're trying to get over 2,000 subs by the time we rock into week three, so please help us out. We'll move on to the Baltimore side of the football and I think one of the biggest question marks for me, Austin, was watching Tyson Williams' usage go from a first half, you know, explosive back to Tyson in some sort of timeshare. Uh, now, as you know, Greg Roman saying we're going to use every single back on the lineup or in the on the roster. And there's some reason to believe that they're not messing around. In 2020, no halfback broke 40% snap share on the year. Same story in 2019, not a single halfback broke 46%. 
And the same story in 2018, except that season, no halfback broke 27%. Um, You'd have to go back to 2014. That's seven years ago to find a season where John Harbaugh gave a halfback more than 50% of the snaps. And I know you know who this one was, Big Travi. (laughs) That season, it was Justin Forsett with 65.7%. My point with all of this is that Baltimore wants to be a committee system. History shows that, and the words this week back up that history. Harbaugh has a committee right now. He wants to run a committee, um, and he will run a committee. It's going to be difficult to predict. It's going to be frustrating. Um, I'd consider trading Tyson Williams if you've got anybody in your league who actually believes that he's going to be the guy we saw in the first half and not the guy we saw in the second half. Johnny, I want to look at Mar- Marquise Brown, who we had a sighting of last week or on Monday night in that great live stream that we had. And then Andrews, who actually did the reverse and kind of disappeared on Monday night. Which is more likely to continue for you, Johnny? Do you see Mark Andrews kind of uh, relegated to a secondary option, or do you think Marquise Brown uh, continues to stay and be what he is? Yeah, so I am really kind of – not really kind of. I am – I'm concerned about Mark Andrews uh, and, and and what his market share and usage could potentially be and that he – yes, we know what his ceiling is. He can be one of the best tight ends in this league. However, I wanted to point this out. He has scored five or fewer half-point PPR points in the last two matchups against Kansas City. Who Obviously, we know he plays Kansas City this week, so not a great matchup for him. And I also want to point out that seven of his last 15 games, he has been held to seven fantasy points or fewer. And in nine of those 15 games, he has seen six or fewer targets in a game. So there is a lot of concern for me about Mark Andrews. We already knew the passing volume wasn't high, and it is starting to look like he isn't that primary option for Lamar Jackson anymore. He, you know, Lamar is starting to spread the ball around to his receivers a little bit more, getting a little comfortable with that. And so I do think there's some troubling concern for Mark Andrews, not only this week, but moving forward this season, because the the passing volume is just not going to be there to sustain that. And then as far as the, the thing that kind of surprised me, and, and I want to toss it to you guys, too, to get your thoughts on this, because I, I, I picked up on this stat this morning as as we're doing these stats uh, for the show. And I thought it was very interesting. Marquise Brown, who we all know is kind of a, 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 you know, we weren't really hyping up. A lot of people weren't really hyping him up uh, during the off season. However, dating back to last year, Marquise Brown has had seven straight games of double digit fantasy points. He has caught a touchdown pass in six of those seven games. And so, yes, you could say he's touchdown dependent somewhat, However, if you're getting the consistency at that, you know, in at the at the touchdown on the on the touchdowns and you're becoming the go to guy in the red zone for Lamar Jackson, there is some upside there as a as a flex play because you were getting him super deep in in uh, drafts. And so I wouldn't mind playing Marquise in this in this matchup. Of course, we know they're going to have to put up points, keep up with Kansas City. And it's looking like Marquise is actually emerging as Lamar's number one option. And so that's where I would go. I know Sammy Watkins had a big week one, almost hit 100 yards. But let me remind you, like, same story, different year, different chapter, but it all begins the same. Once upon a time, Sammy Watkins week one went off. Then what does he do the rest of the season? Get hurt. Yeah, so uh, I'm not buying into the Sammy Watkins uh, week one. I'm not picking him up or playing him in this game, even though it could be a revenge game, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I don't you, know. I want to ask you, Johnny, do you, do you think if Sammy Watkins revenge? stays he healthy? Play there. If Sammy Watkins is healthy, do you think that this kind of type of production could continue at all? The camps, the reports coming out of camp were that he was the best wide receiver. Week one, he was the most targeted. He had the best game. If he's healthy, can he keep this up? Or do you think health be gone, the man is just washed? Health be gone. He's he's, and it's not solely that he's just washed. Like he can produce, but he's not. He doesn't have that high high upside because Lamar Jackson's pass volume is not going to be there. So, and you're still talking like Bateman's supposed to come back at some point in this offense. It's looking like Brown is is like the, has the most connection with Lamar. And so I I don't think that Sammy Watkins is once again. I I I've never really been on the Sammy Watkins train. I think he's a a solid wide receiver, but I don't think you're going to want to play him in fantasy. 
It's an interesting case. I, I, we don't have a lot of track record, Austin, of a guy like coming on late and then staying healthy when he has had injury issues yeah. before. But like maybe, you know, maybe that happens. Maybe we get something unlocked in the passing attack. I mean, just when I look at Lamar, though, uh, it's not looking great no matter what is going on in the passing attack. He's not thrown for over 250 yards in his last 17 games. Jalen Hurts has the same amount of 300-plus yard passing games in five starts as Lamar Jackson has in 43 of them. Um, I think Lamar, with these banged-up weapons and subpar offensive attack that we saw, the mixing of the run game, which doesn't seem to get them in any kind of rhythm, the offensive line, which they did a lot of work on, didn't seem to be holding up even against a, you know, not, I would say a subpar uh, Las Vegas attack last week. Um I don't know if he's going to reach the ceiling that we thought. I would be wait, wanting, waiting for a big game. This could be it, high over under, and looking to deal him. And then I keep an eye on the waiver wire in your league for a guy like Justin Fields, Trey Lance, Jameis Winston, guys with you know, probably maybe higher ceilings this year for me than what I'm seeing out of Lamar so far over the last you know 17 or so games. If he's not going to get the high touchdown rate that he had in his MVP season. He's going to need to throw for some more yards, and he's not doing that either. And so I just think, yeah, he's never going to give you like a below 15, 18-point game because of the rushing, but he's also never going to hit that ceiling of, of Dak or, or Kyler Murray numbers. And that, you know, we were still drafting him high enough to kind of do that, and, he, and it just doesn't look very good right now. Right here. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. If you still have a lot to say about fantasy football, maybe you want to give Johnny a little bit of crap for his take today, then go on over to our Discord channel and join the conversation there. Click the link in the description below. And if you still want more content, check out one of these videos. Homie, don't you hear the whispers?